Yes, thank you, Mustafa. Thank you, Anushka. The two quick ones, always. It's always nice to see that prompt response. You know, I was told yesterday that basically there were some good comments basically that uh, came on the chat and I failed to recognize them. Thank you very much. Keep commenting it because uh, if I have missed it, I'll try not to miss it. Uh, your comments are important because that helps me to basically understand how you are, how the whole thing is. I also need to be evaluated. I also need to feel, I also need to feel that if I'm doing good or if I'm adding value to what, I, what I'm here for. So let's take this forward. Education Abroad Counseling Center. It's a company that started in February 2000. The vision is to educate the youth by providing them with study abroad career options worldwide. The mission is to help 10 lakh high school and graduate students achieve career growth using free application technology. We have concerned more than 13,500 students and the numbers are going fast. All major countries, all levels, and all major programs are some of the USPs of study EACC, Education Abroad Counseling Center. It is one of the few study abroad counseling centers that can provide the counseling for all countries, all levels, and all programs. We provide guaranteed admissions or we give a counseling fee, total counseling fee refund. This is because of the pre-application-based technology that we provide to find eligibility of student with the universities. Now, today we are going to cover the managing study abroad finance, your managing your finance, study abroad finance, part two. Yesterday was part one and before that was scholarship. All these are related to finance and all these are important to understand how you can reduce your cost of education, make your study abroad dream become possible and affordable. So let's go ahead and start with today, how you can manage your study abroad finance. So today is the last day of this particular uh, finance series. And if you have missed any of this, you can go to the YouTube video and check at EACC Education Abroad Counseling Center. And do, uh, do remember to subscribe and uh, like, uh, to click the bell icon, to post a comment so that I can read them and I can also reply to them. So let's start with today's session, how to manage study abroad finance. As I've said, uh, scholarships are offered basically both at undergraduate level, at graduate level. If I'm saying graduate, it includes master's, MBA, PhD. So at all levels, scholarships are available. Scholarship could be need-based, could be merit-based, or could be on the basis of your athletic or sports. Assistantships basically are more for graduate who are applying for master's, who are applying for MBA, or who are applying for PhD programs. Assistantship could be your teaching assistantship where you would be supporting the professor in the teaching activity. Could be a research based where you will be supporting the professor in research activity or a graduate assistantship where you would be basically working in the administrative part of the department. Uh, education, you, you can also basically apply to other departments as well. So it doesn't have to be only your department. You can also, if university allows, then you can look at assistantship at other departments as well. Today, uh, we, I'm going to cover education loans. So scholarship, assistantship, and education loan are three major finance for study abroad. Are three major finance for study abroad. So I have covered all the three. First day, scholarship. Second day, I have covered assistantship. That was yesterday. And today, I'll be covering education loan. So this will cover your major finance. Okay? It will cover the major cost of your finance. And if you understand this concept well, then you would be able to save a lot of your money, a lot of your mullah. Uh, also important is I've given a few more things here. I'm not going to uh, put a separate presentation for this because these are small, small money that can save and even small, small penny can become big. You know, you can save a good amount and that can reduce your cost of education. So one is besides these three, you are going to talk about free pickup services. Some universities basically, if you send, uh, let them know that you are coming, send the ticket details, they allow, uh, they have a free, free, free pickup service. So you can save on that money. Uh, you can attend orientation. Uh, so if you attend the orientation of the university, they will tell you a lot of things, how uh, you can manage things, what you should do, what you should not do. So those are important part, basically attend the university orientation. Shared accommodation. So if you could share your accommodation, you can save the cost. Undergraduate, 
probably first year mostly would be mandatory for you to stay university campus if not then you can have stay off campus shared accommodation in in on campus also you have this shared accommodation facility you can share your accommodations it could be two uh, double sharing or triple sharing accommodations are available so you can share that if you are going to share an apartment outside you normally share with more people uh, on campus jobs off campus jobs so on campus jobs where you are allowed to work 20 hours per week and doing the off break holidays or summer break winter break you are allowed to work full time which is 40 hours per week off campus job not allowed in some countries like for example usa doesn't allow off campus job uh, canada also basically off campus jobs uh, are not allowed mostly you can check with the university if they are allowed uh, uk for example allows off campus europe allows off campus so there are a lot of other countries that allows off campus so off campus job also you are allowed to do 20 hours per week okay in case you are not doing on campus job 20 hours per week off campus job is allowed per uh, per week and 40 hours per week doing the break and on the uh, doing the summer break winter break and doing the holidays you can do that um what more you can book the air ticket early or at a discount period so you can do that when you go, when you know that you are going to study abroad and you know you can keep a check on the ticket price because the ticket price sometimes fluctuate a lot and this pandemic period the ticket price as you know in fact become very costly so plan you know book your ticket accordingly so that you get the best price student discount cards are available which is called ices card isis ices card you can take this discount card this discount card is basically you can use the discount card in many places in grocery stores in your shopping so you can make uh, you can cut down your expenses use public transport and get pass you can public transport pass and this will save your transport rather than having uh, the ola uber or uh, those type of things you can have your public transport to save your cost or you can also drive a bike uh, which is available on rent shop doing sales which will reduce the cost purchase from community stores because the cheap they are cheaper buy used books or digital books this will reduce the cost of your books and supplies learn to cook so i waited it last because i also don't know to cook i stayed uh, for my mba i stayed alone uh, with my friends i shared a accommodation i have told you uh, during the schooling period also basically uh, but i never learned to cook i had a maid uh, who was able to do that but if you can learn to cook then you can save a lot of money because uh, food expenses are costly abroad and if you learn to cook that's one good quality that you can have which can save a lot of money explore places this is your time you have been to foreign country and if you are not going to explore the place, place different places then you are not able to utilize that study abroad experience it's a wonderful experience make it memorable because all these places that you are going to have, it will add value to your profile as well you know you will have lot to share, share basically when you basically uh, visit different places you will have lot to learn from these places so make your study abroad experience wonderful make it also study well do well fulfill your dreams and be successful in your life uh, now letting today i'm going to talk about as i said study loan so scholarship assistantship and study loans are three major component of your study abroad finance the remaining ones are important can bring down your cost it can cover part of your accommodation living expenses but these three things will have a major impact on your cost of finance okay already discussed i have said scholarship assistance so today we are going to talk about the loans let's understand the concept first in india we have education loan institutes which are nationalized banks like sbi bank of baroda punjab national bank we have private banks like hdfc axis bank icici bank and then we have nbfcs which is hdfc kerala avance power uh, empower financing prodigy finance and incred now um, let me first basically introduce a concept called higher the risk higher the interest higher the risk higher the interest okay so if the risk is high in terms of your study abroad the interest is also going to be high okay most student basically you know even if they understand they ask me this basic question again and again that sir can't i get this at a lower rate so if the risk is high the interest is high okay if you are going to take more risk you want higher profit as well 
So higher the risk, higher the interest. So when you are going for nationalized banks, probably they take less amount of risk because they will not go uh, out of the way in basically giving out loan. They have certain restrictions. So the interest would be also low compared to me. Compared to most of them. Okay. Second, I will also talk about secured loan and unsecured loan in terms of uh, education bank loan. So there also this risk concept will work. Private banks are able to take little more risk compar you know, comparatively to nationalized banks. The interest rate is also high. Or even if basically they offer the same loan, they will have a higher interest rates. A little higher interest rate compared to national, uh, nationalized, let's say, SBI bank. Even in nationalized banks, the interest rate may vary from bank to bank. So check with different banks. It is not that if you go to one nationalized bank, the same type of interest rate is uh, applicable for all other banks. Each bank rate different, interest may be uh, different. So it could be PLR prime lending rate, plus there would be a sum spread, which would become your interest rate. So what would be the spread will vary from bank to bank. And your non-banking financial corporation, which is your NBFCs, that the interest rate would be the highest. So your interest rate can go from 10% to maybe around 20% also, or 18% also, depending upon what type of risk the bank is taking. Okay. So your interest rate could be from 10% to 20%. That's the range I'm talking about. So depending upon which banks you're selecting, and you can basically, uh, your cost of finance will vary. Okay, understand you have taken a 30 lakhs loan. So you just think about the loan, but imagine the interest factor. If the interest for basically, let's say five years loan, you are going to take, if the interest is 12 lakhs or 15 lakhs, then that 12 lakh, 15 lakhs is going to add to that 30 lakh and your cost of finance will become 45 lakhs. Your total cost of your education will become 45 lakhs. So interest plays a very important factor. And that will vary from which type of institutions are you approaching. Uh, the second is unsecured loan and secured loan. What is an unsecured loan? Suppose you want a loan and you don't want to mortgage anything. You don't want to mortgage your house or your gold or any other assets. And you want the bank to give loan on the credibility of the guarantor. Because as a person, you are a student, most probably you are not earning most of the times. If you are earning, then basically you are going to study. So they will look at your guarantor and on the guarantor credibility, they will give you the loan. So that is called an unsecured loan. Where they have not taken anything. For example, if I want a home loan, I have to pledge the house to the bank and then I get a home loan. After I basically finish the complete the home loan, I give I, I, uh, then I get my bank documents, the, my home loan, do, uh, home documents, the property documents back. So that is how it works. In unsecured loan, they don't take anything. They give on the basis of the credibility of your guarantor. So that is called unsecured loan. So there are people who are looking for unsecured loans, who don't want to basically go for secured loans. So if you're going for unsecured loan, the interest rate would be little high. How much high? It could be one to 2.5% high. How about the secured loan? So if secured loan is available at 10%, your Unsecured loan could be from 11% to 12.5%. Okay, that could be the difference. And if I'm saying 12.5%, 2.5% higher interest on 30 lakhs would make a lot of difference to your cost of education. Yeah, unsecured loan, you may need one or two guarantors which are on IT return. Why IT return? Because if they are not earning, then they will not the bank will not give you a loan. It is on that credibility that the bank is given loan. So they have to be on IT return person who are, who are who has substantial income and on that basis, because you will be studying abroad. So if tomorrow you don't pay, somebody has to pay. So that guarantor is important for them. So it could be from parent or near relatives. So it cannot be anybody, friends uh, or any unknown person. You can't be a guarantor. You have to have your parents or near relatives as guarantor. Now, here, basically, for the period, suppose you are going for a bachelor's. So bachelor's is, let's say, you are going to US, four years of bachelor's, 
So four years they will charge you simple interest plus six months monetary period they will give. Now uh, that is all job whichever is faster. So four years they will charge you for simple interest. If you got the job after four years immediately, then the interest you can inform and then from the immediately the, you will have to start paying the repaying the repaying the loan. If you don't get the job, you have still six months of time to get a job. And once you get a job, after that, you will repay the loan. Till that time, you will pay simple interest. Okay. This is a benefit that you have. Okay. So if I'm going to talk a little bit on the finance, this is the time what you can do is you can start saving money and try not only pay the interest, but in this period, try to pay more because you're just paying the simple interest. And you can bring, bring down the principal considerably. If you can bring down the principal, principal considerably, then your interest cost later on would be on compound interest will be less. It will be less burden to you. So during your study period, try to basically see how you can repay the loan. You know, there are opportunities, I said, besides the scholarships, assistantships, you can do on-campus, off-campus jobs. You can share your accommodation and various other things that are so which can help you to basically save your money. So if you are able to save the money and if you are able to basically repay that in that study period, then probably you would also reduce the cost of your education and that would be a good help for you later on. After your study period, after six months of moratorium, or if you get the job, whichever is earlier, the compound interest will be applicable. Okay, now here it is important. Some of the banks, mostly NBFCs, you have to check. Sometimes they charge compound interest when you are studying also. You have to ask them, are you, are you going to charge a simple interest during the more time period, during my study period? Ask them clearly. Because if they are going to charge you compound interest, your cost of education will automatically increase. Okay, compound interest means interest on interest. Right? So that is one important factor. Normally, as I've said, unsecured loan is little higher compared to basically, if you're, I'm, if I'm talking of nationalized bank, I'm talking about 10% if SBI is offering it, then 11 to 12.5% could be unsecured loan. Secured loan is definitely against some things, against a security, which could be your property, gold, fixed deposit, or approved assets by the bank. Still, you may need one guarantor, okay? The bank may demand, as a, you can ask the checklist, so they may have a guarantor, in which case also that you should be an IT return pair. Okay, in this also, you will have that simple interest during your study period. If your master's is of two years, or so two years plus six months, or job, whichever is earlier. If your master is of one year, then one year plus six months, or job, whichever is earlier. That is basically where they will be charging you simple interest. As I've told you, use this period to repay the loan so that you have your cost of education can come down. Compound interest after the study period will start. So that is where your basically you will also basically, you know, you will have to start your EMI will start in terms of principal plus interest on a compounded basis. Uh, interest rates are little lower compared to unsecured loan. Why? Because the risk is less for a bank. They have a property against the loan. If the risk is low, the interest is low. Again, it depends from whether you are pro approaching the nationalized bank, private bank, or NBFCs. So here also, the, based on secured loan or unsecured loan, the interest rate may vary. So interest rate basically of SBI could be 10% on a secured loan. Interest rate of NBFCs could be around 15% on a secured loan. So that could be also a gap that you will have to see. Uh, now, coming to the education loan eligibility. Uh, okay, five minutes. Unsecured loan without security. So, you need to have one or two uh, co applicants which are guarantors, IT return peers. So, they need to be parent or near relatives. You need to have two years of IT return or Form 16, two years of Form 16. They may ask you for a salary slip of three months or six months. Other car copy of the guarantor, other copy, other copy of the applicant, passport copy of the applicant. Uh, unsecured loan could be in the range of four to seven point five bank, uh, seven point five lakhs in nationalized banks. 
okay mostly 4 lakhs to 7.5 lakhs in nationalized bank okay a private banks can give a little bit more uh in, in private banks they may also even in national bank they some of them have the university list okay and also on what program they are going to give so if you are going to, if they if you are going for a stem program and if you require more and if it is on a ranking list maybe uh, times higher higher education ranking or basically qs ranking you may get the loan so otherwise they may not give you a loan suppose you are going for a liberal art program they may not give you a loan so it depends on program to program because they, they don't want to take a higher risk they don't have a evaluation system to understand the risk that they are going to take so they may not give you a loan whereas nbfcs may be ready to give you a loan because nbfcs also charge you comparatively higher interest so they will be ready to give you a loan if you don't get with these banks but if there is a need if you feel that you are not getting loan and you want to go abroad then nbfcs could be a good option as well high interest rate compared to secured loan is unsecured loan academic documents of all major years certificate degree certificate test scores will be required you may have to give a offer letter or i20 from university if you are applying if i20 is for us secured loan with security property needs to be evaluated because in case there you are no state is on property so title has to be clear and uh, they will check on the legal side of the property and everything uh, and anybody can mortgage property so it's not necessary that you are, you know most of them feel that it has to be of own personal property or parents property anybody can mortgage property as, as long as the bank has the security the bank is okay with that that's what i have said okay need uh, one co co applicant guarantor it return uh, parent or near relative or the person who has mortgaged the property need two years of it return or form 16 salary slips of last three or six months aadhar copy passport copy of the applicant in terms of secured loan because there is a security the loan loan amount would be definitely high it could be from 7.5 lakhs to 20 to 30 lakhs in a nationalized banks or basically in sometimes national uh, private banks private banks can go further also depending on the university requirement here also there were some of the banks even basically um, uh, nationalized banks for example i have students who have uh, national who have got taken loan from nationalized banks up to 70 lakhs it's on property but the, they also ask they have a university list so you have to check the university list the ranking uh, as i have said and it is mostly on stem program or mba programs that they are offering that much of loan otherwise 30 lakhs loans you may normally get it private banks nbfc banks uh, there are banks who can give you more than 30 lakhs and uh, it depends upon the university requirement the higher interest rate could be applicable in this case uh, academic documents offer letter and i20 now next is cost of financing this is important because when you are going to take the loan you are going to look at the interest rate okay because that will uh, affect your cost of finance how much you are going to pay as interest your processing fee whether it is 15000 for collaterals if you are going to taking a secured loan or 1% on the, of the total loan uh, or for non collaterals pre payment penalty now this is also important because some of the bank may mostly nbfcs may have a pre payment penalty so ask them whether there is basically foreclosure is allowed whether there is any pre payment penalty so if there are pre payment penalty that means every time you basically if you foreclose the loan you will be told to pay a uh, extra amount normally as per the rbi instruction this is not applicable now uh, but nbfcs they say that they don't come under that particular instructions so we'll do look at this particular thing mostly if there is a uh, there should be no pre payment penalty foreign exchange conversion charges how much time you are charge uh, spending the money abroad what is the spread when they are going to basically send the money abroad from you rupees to dollars what is their spread ask them the some of the banks charge 2% spread which is quite high okay so you can look at ask for the spread you know today we have wire transfer we have fly, fly wire as well most of the universities uh, you know have uh, some relationship with fly wires and they accept money to fly so you can get that spread up front flexibility of reimbursement how uh, you can reimburse your loan okay sometime basically they said we'll only pay the money to the university so in which we, in that case you may not have the liquidity or some of the banks or you know they tell you to take up front entire money loan which is not required because then the interest will be applicable to entire loan that has been dis disbursed otherwise the interest is applicable to the amount that you have disbursed suppose the loan is of 30 lakhs you just want 5 lakhs of rupees 
the interest would be applicable on 5 lakhs rupees only not on the entire amount so and other offers sometimes they say they tell you to buy insurance cover when you are going to take the loan which is not mandatory but that is you have to check on that as well the benefits of education loan you can get a income tax benefit as per the income tax act atc it is basically applicable for 8 years okay you will be saving a good amount of money besides basically uh, you are saving on the income this is extra benefit that you can get save on income uh, if the parent uh, is the co uh, guarantor the parent can take the benefit of that basically uh, income tax benefit so that is will save your money it will cost bring down the cost of your education uh, that's one and uh, you know if the child comes back to india he can even take the benefit you know of this particular section if he is working abroad he cannot take the benefit okay one uh, if the child is working then nobody can take the benefit uh, as per the rule simple interest doing study period plus doing uh, doing more term period so this is important just understand this that the simple interest is applicable doing your loan period doing your study period interest rate applicable uh, on money disbursed so you don't have to you, though you have taken a loan for 30 lakhs you know you are safe you know that you have enough funds for your education but you are only paying the interest for the amount that has been disbursed so you have the liquidity it solves your liquidity requirement foreclosure of education loan is possible it makes the child responsible for education and it makes study abroad possible for many of them to the education loan uh, important tech, tips are basic to have a foreign exchange account or a rupee account nre or nr account because if you want to disburse the if you want to send money from india to uh, abroad or from abroad to uh, the account this account is must okay so open this account before you go abroad forex card is important because um, cash will have the problem of change if you can load the money in the foreign ex forex card then they charge the interbank exchange rate so that is the minimum exchange rate easy to carry easy to use on reaching abroad open a bank account you may have to go in person carry your kyc which is your passport your proof of address uh, where you are going to stay you are registered on notarized rent agreement will do offer letter or enrollment letter and opening balance amount you may have to put some amount in that account some of the countries like canada germany you have this uh, canada has a gic germany has a blocked account where you have already put the money in that account you go there you open an account it's as simple as that apply for a credit card because that helps there are a lot of offers that comes to so look at the offers you earn miles and reward points as well there are money management app like mint and there are other app also use this app because that will give, tell you basically how you are spending the money and all those things it will keep a check on you and maintain a good credit score if you are going to stay in us because that will affect okay whether you are going to take loan in future where you are going to stay your employer is going to check your credit cards credit score all these are important part Thank you very much for joining.